How to Make $100,000 a Year Gunsmithing with your host, Gene Kelly. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, we've got a lot of folks on this call. Thank you for all uh, coming tonight. Uh, what we're going to be sharing with you is uh, exactly the title of this, which is How to Make $100,000 a Year Gunsmithing. That's the subject of the call, Making Money with Gunsmithing. And yes, as much as $100,000 a year. Now, you may not want or need to make that much money uh, when you're gunsmithing. You, your needs may much, be much more modest, say, you know, 10000 25000 or 50000 a year. But what we're going to be discussing still applies to you. Now, your situation will vary because, you know, everybody's thing, situation is different. And I can't promise you any specific results because everyone's situation is different. But, and this is important, the core principles are the same, and I'm going to prove it. Now, in the next 80 minutes, we're going to provide the answer to some of the hundreds of questions we received from people who signed up for this call. And just some of the questions that we're going to provide answers to include uh, questions about licensing, getting experience, tools that you need, training, what to charge, what kind of shop do I need space-wise, what, what about insurance, and how do I market my gunsmithing business, and a whole lot more. Okay, So buckle up, and we're going to get started and going to move quickly here. I also want you uh, to stay on the call all the way through to the end because we're going to have an open Q&A session where you'll get a chance to ask questions, and I also have a special offer for any of you that are ready to get started in gunsmithing. Now, I have a special surprise for you. To, uh, right now, I'm going to interview one of our AGI professional gunsmithing students, Jan Merson. And uh, Jan, are you there? I'm here. All right, great. Let me tell you just a little bit about Jan. Uh, he's only been gunsmithing really f for a relatively short while, uh, and he's already made $100,000 a year gunsmithing. He's going to tell us about that. Now, you may be inclined to say to yourself, well, I couldn't do that, or I, I couldn't do that in my town, my state, my area, whatever. And you need to reject those thoughts. Just take those thoughts, throw them out the window, because you have to sit here with an open mind. Your situation really isn't all that different from the thousands of students we've had go through our professional gunsmithing course, and Jan is just one of many successful students we've had. So uh, let, let's, um, let's listen to what Jan has to say. I think you're going to learn a lot, and we'll get to answering all those questions too. So, Jan, tell us uh, yeah. briefly how you got started in gunsmithing. Um, you, you were a police officer originally, correct? That's correct. I'm retired. Okay, good, good. And um, so tell us about how you got started in gunsmithing and, uh, and a bit about your story and where you're at now. Well, when I retired uh, from the uh, Department of Corrections, uh, hello? Yeah. Oh, okay, I heard a beep. Anyway, so when I re retired from the Department of Corrections and spending all these years of trying to reacclimate myself to um, uh, outside life and getting jobs, I just, you know, decided uh, that I wanted to uh, actually – uh, get into uh, fixing guns and not knowing the first thing about fixing a gun, repairing a gun. Uh, the closest I came to that was literally on my department. I was carrying a Smith & Wesson model, um, oh, God, uh, the Highway Patrolman, the model 29, oh, 27. Yeah. And I learned how to take that apart by watching somebody, and that's how I learned how to maintenance that gun. And I said, you know, I wonder if I could do this with all these guns. But, again, not knowing how to learn this, and I didn't want to spend time to go to school, I actually found uh, a couple of courses, but AGI actually stood out for me because I have a disability as well, and that is a learning disability. And I learn better by watching than I do by sitting in a class. So I called the folks there. They sent me out a DVD, and... Literally, I think within a week and a half or two weeks after getting that DVD, I signed up and uh, I uh, just began my trek that way. Now, now that was only, what, a couple of years ago, correct? Uh, that was uh, three years ago, yeah. Okay. All right. So you, and previous to that, you weren't a gunsmith. You didn't have really much knowledge in the way of firearms design, you said. And then you said you have a learning disability. You mean uh, like 
what? Oh, it's uh, ADD. Uh, I have a attention deficit disorder, oh. and uh, so for me going to school, uh, I have to um, literally study and pay attention five times more than anybody else would. So when I went to the police academy, I wanted it so bad that I literally stayed up at night studying more than anybody else would and then joining study classes. And I said, you know what, that's not how I want to do my life now. I'm to the age where I don't want to sit in class and have to do that. Um, So this was the the perfect way for me to uh, actually learn a new trade. Well, and video is probably easier for you because there's not a lot of reading involved. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the uh, other thing I like about all, and that's 100% right, I don't like reading. Uh, it, it bores me after a while. So uh, watching the videos were, was more entertaining because I learn better by watching the person who's actually teaching the class do exactly what he's uh, explaining than it is for me to listen to somebody in a conference and just uh, – uh, say, wow, man, I can't do that, but it's always easier to see someone do it. And it was, I, I started I started the gunsmithing business w- with the help of another gunsmith in the area that actually helped teach me a little bit more. Um, I actually started my own gunsmithing, I think it was about three and a half months after I started taking the uh, the courses. Okay, yeah. And And what's that business grown to now? Uh, it's grown for the from the first year, the first 13 or 14 months. I actually grossed um, uh, over 100,000 on that one, and I'm kind of like tripling it now. Well, you, wow. Okay. Yeah, and I'm working out of my garage, so that really uh, uh, I'm not getting exposure as if I had a shop. But it's all word of mouth and and getting out there and telling people who you are and what you do. Okay, so there's a few people that just fell off their chair when they heard all that. So explain that a little bit more. What kind of business are you doing that you can that you can make that kind of money? Uh, well, what I'm doing right now is I promote myself by working the gun shows um, and doing gunsmithing there and advertising there. Um, I advertise at the uh, uh, at the indoor shooting range, which I get a lot of business from those guys um, and. And my website, um, which I'm getting uh, quite a bit of business now, uh, I'm a lot of long-distance business where I'm getting actually people mailing me their guns from Northern California to where I'm at here uh, just to repair them. Uh, so I'm getting the word out by word of mouth and the kind of work I do, you know, and that really that really um, uh, says a lot. Uh, if you do, uh, excuse the language, crappy work, you're going to get no business at all. So um, uh, a lot of my work right now is all word of mouth. However, if I did get a shop and I am going to get one soon, I'm going to have to hire people because there's going to be no way that I'm going to be able to hand in the walk, handle walk-in traffic, let alone uh, the rest of my business. Okay. So business is booming, and and part of it is because – and see, a lot of people out there think that the economy is dead. Well, People always have money for what they want, what they really want, or what they think they need, and they they find it. And I can tell you right now, uh, well, you can tell me if your experience is the same, but right now the self-defense marketplace is hot. And yeah, good. Yeah, and anybody, but and also building anything AR. I mean, AR parts are flying off the shelf still. Uh, the gun sales themselves may have slowed down a bit, but people are customizing, tricking out. Um, Shuey, Gene Shuey, our master gunsmith who teaches the whole pistol, custom pistol smithing se- section on Glocks and 1911s, uh, has a multi-year backlog, and uh, and that's on his full race guns and and um, and you know uh, Ipsic guns and so on. Uh, but he's building Glocks and he's slamming those out the door. Uh, just beautiful work. Uh, but there's no shortage of demand for them, and those are big dollars that he's getting for those, um, and people don't seem to have a problem paying for it. So, so where, what, what's your experience in the same area? Uh, well, I'm finding out is when we had this little crunch here uh, this past year, uh, the one thing I did find out is even though we were in a crunch, but the one thing that wasn't in a crunch was the gunsmithing because people, like you said, always had the money for their favorite toys, and their favorite toys 
is gunsmithing. And, um, you know, and, and, and uh, out here, uh, the gunsmiths are, are far few and in between. Uh, there are... The whole country's that uh, way. It is, yeah. I'm getting calls right now. I didn't know you were in the area. I didn't know you were in the county. I didn't know you were here. Uh, everybody is dying off. But, they're, you know, for, for every 10 gunsmiths that die off, you know, unfortunately there's only one of us that are coming on where there needs to be a lot more. Uh, you know, the, I don't want to have to say, hey, you know, everybody sign up and come to where I live and do this. But, you know, uh, there's enough room here for 20 gunsmiths, and I still wouldn't uh, break a sweat over losing anything. Jeez, yeah. Hey, um, the boy, there's so many questions come to mind, but one right off the bat is a lot of people are going to be asking, the numbers you're talking about, is that all gunsmithing or is that a lot of gun sales and stuff too? No gun sales. Um, um, I, I, the only sales and guns I do are uh, if a person wants a specific gun, they want me to order it, I'll do it. But a lot of mine are um, uh, used guns. People give me their guns for consignment, or if they uh, they'll come to me and say, "Hey, is this worth fixing?" And I tell them, "No." They'll want me to sell it for them. And so, you know, my uh, I don't make that much in gun sales. So I would say at least 80% or better is all the gunsmithing. I, I I do virtually no gun sales. The other 20% are my out of state. Uh, uh, um, out of state droses that I do, where people are having their guns mailed into me, and I do the droses long distance. Yeah. So, um, but that's where my other twenty percent is coming from. I do no gun sales. Okay, well, dro- dros for everybody is the California language for the dealer's record of sale. Um, but anyway, the uh, okay, well that's that's hugely impressive. Um, and to do that kind of money, what I need everybody to understand. It's part of it is there's a huge vacuum of demand out there, but the other part is being savvy about the kind of work you take on, and we talk about that a lot in our courses and how to approach that. And in fact, we I have with our master gunsmithing course and enhanced master gunsmithing course, we have a whole business success package with that that addresses all this, so we don't have time to go into now. But it's um, you know so much of it is between your own ears. You know, having the confidence mentally to charge what you're worth. And, uh, you know, uh, Jan, I know that you've got a pricing structure that works for you. Do you mind sharing at least some of your minimums and stuff like that? No, not at all. Um, I charge at a minimum. So let's say someone comes in and they want a, a sights put on their gun for the labor portion of it. You know, I charge a minimum of $45. Mm-hmm. And the market bears it out here. Uh, you know, if I was to charge people 85, they would do it. Um, but I want to be fair with everybody because some jobs only take a few minutes, literally. So I said, you know what, I got to structure myself. Otherwise, I'm not going to make money if I only charge $10 to put on a set of sites. So I tell everybody, it's a $45 minimum, but I get $65 an hour yep. to do work. You know, and so if I if you tell me, uh, say I want to customize my uh, 1911, which I have four of them, I'm doing right now, I bid it out as uh, as an hourly rate. I don't give them. I don't say it's going to be 45 for the first hour and 65. It's a minimum 45, whether it takes me one minute or 15 minutes. And people, if people ask you, well, well, why are you charging this much money for a few minutes? I always tell them, well, if you could have done this yourself, you would have done it without me. However, I, what I explain to them is, look, I got the specialized tools, I have the knowledge to go with it, and I'm the one that's doing the work. Um, so this is the this is the price structure that I came up with, and it's fair with everybody in the area. Well, it's like the old story of the guy that had the little ball, pe- two ounce ball peen hammer, went into the factory that was shut down. They brought him out of retirement. They drug him in there. He walked around for about 15 minutes, and he took the little two-ounce ball peen hammer and whacked it hard in one little place. And the whole factory started running again, so he handed him a bill for $100,000. And the guy said, what? You've been here for 15 minutes, $100,000? What, what? And he said, look, you know, uh, $1 was for hitting for the 15 minutes. The other I mean, the other $99,999 was knowing where to hit. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty much the same with gunsmithing. You know, you need to know, and, and you are so right on when you talk about having a minimum like that, and that is one of the biggest places people blow it. 
because it does take you a certain amount of time just to organize yourself for each particular job you're doing. And you'll make it up on some jobs. Some other jobs might get you a little bit in the shorts. But overall, you'll do well when you treat yourself well by charging appropriately. And the market will bear it. We're seeing it all over the country. Bob Dunlap shop, Master Gunsmith Bob Dunlap, his shop's back up to a couple of months, and that's with two very top professional gunsmiths working there. Um, it, it, there's, a, there's a real shortage of gunsmiths around the country, and I usually tell guys, look, just look at what the local automotive shops are charging in your area. There's a heck of a lot more auto mechanics around than there are gunsmiths. And so you can use that as a little bit of an indicator. And we actually, again, in that business success package, we have a flat rate job book uh, for all the different kinds of jobs that will come into your shop that gives you an estimated hour. You plug in your shop rate times that hourly. It's like a flat rate automotive book. And that comes with our, uh, our master uh, gunsmithing course. So anyway, Jan, you hit on something I want to uh, – Real briefly, you talked about you're doing this all currently in your garage, correct? Yes, I am. And I have, uh, I also want to, uh, I'll answer that, but I do want to say is that I am three and a half weeks behind in all my work. So I tell everybody, I don't care how simple the job is, I'm three and a half weeks behind. I have other people in front of these people, just like Gene Shuey does. you got to get these people in order. So uh, luckily, not good, I am three and a half weeks behind Gene. Cool. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. like. I mean, uh, you you know you're you're not going to have trouble paying the bills when you've always got that backlog of work. No, not at all. Now to get to your question, um, where I live is a guard gated community, and what my restriction is is that um, I have an association that I have to contend with, and the association says I can't keep my garage door open for more than 15 minutes, can't uh, perform a business out of here. But um, the people in my complex, and uh, which are uh, 50 years and older, um, uh, no, nobody here minds me actually keeping my garage door open and running my business from here because I do get a lot of traffic and people coming in through that gate, um, and they don't seem to mind, and I keep it on a professional level so I don't interfere with the other people that live here because I have to keep them in mind as well, like you would if you even lived on a cul-de-sac. You have to keep the little kids and everybody else in mind that nobody sees what you're doing or you uh, have uh, gun parts laying around. So for me, it's a blessing that these people actually let me do my job here, which, I, like I said, it's going on four years now. Okay. Well, this is encountering to what a lot of people, and I don't want to go into the details of your situation, uh, Jan, because we did a whole – long recording with one of the leading experts on getting licensing even from your home and that comes with our ma our master gunsmith actually it comes with every level of our gunsmithing course uh, professional courses so but just be aware people that you can get gunsmithing licenses to work out of your home uh, maybe not in all areas but most and there's generally a way to work around everything uh, as long as you're a legitimate person and uh, so anyway, uh, so you, you talked some about how you get business. It's coming word of mouth. You do the gun shows and so on. I like your approach to charging. That's the way I would do it. I'd have a minimum, and I also have certain things that would be my specialty. I've done that in the past, and I know Gene Chewy does, and those are even more profitable uh, for him, like his trigger jobs and his custom, uh, the safeties he puts in, the custom safeties and so on. Um, Jan, I want to get you can pop in here. Along the uh, along the way, and, and throw your your ex experience in. Uh, but I want to jump to. We had hundreds of questions asked, and let me just ha hammer a bunch of them, and you know, kind of th get in here as well. Okay. Okay, um, sure. One of the biggest things that people worry about uh, is the licensing, and like I said, we have that handled as far as in our uh, professional gunsmithing course that package, and we even include all the forms everything you need to know there. The next thing that they're concerned about is the space. And tell me if your experience is different, but I've gunsmithed in, 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 uh, uh, very effectively in a shop where I had about 8 to 10 feet of bench space and then some space behind me for a gun rack and uh, another little area at the end of the uh, bench uh, for a belt sander and my vise and my Fordham tool. 
and at yep. the other end a little bench lathe. That's about all I needed. How much space you got? Uh, me, I have um, I have the entire garage I utilize, and just like you said, I'm I'm having uh, some a friend of mine come in and actually redo mine. Uh, because I'm running out of room here, but I essentially have everything you said, plus I have um, an entire wall of uh, standalone milling machine, which I just bought a new one, uh -huh. um, and my uh, drill press and grinder and belt sander and sandblasting cabinet because I do a lot of refinishing. Okay. Um, and I have a uh, um, a uh, extra large gun safe in here too, which takes up room. And again, this is another one where I have to park both vehicles in here at night, so I have to make it when both vehicles are in here. Nobody actually sees what I do until I back the cars out, and then there you are. There's everything shown for the public. Okay. So really, when your cars are in there, there's not a whole lot of additional space. So anyway, everybody gets the idea of about how much space you really need. And then the next thing is everybody's worried about the tools. Now, I'm going to tell you guys later about an enhanced master gunsmithing kit that we have with our master gunsmithing course, and it's got really everything you need to get started. And I'll tell you about that a little bit later when we're doing the Q&A and so on. But I can, I can just tell you that the core things you, you need are you need a good vise, you need a good uh, Fordham tool, one with a hand chuck and a foot rheostat uh, uh, with a, it, this allows you to drill, to grind, to cut, all those things. Uh, you need a, a belt sander, you need a drill press, not a big one. Uh, you can have a couple sizes you want. Um, it's handy but not necessary to have a bench lathe. Uh, for a lot of repairs you can do without that. You need basic hand tools, which are screwdrivers, pin punches, a couple of different hammer weights, some files. There's not, the, people envision this entire machine shop, and it'd be nice, but most of it you won't do for general repair. You use that only for, you know, generally for custom work or for, uh, you know, like rebarreling custom work. So you don't need a big lathe unless you're doing custom work for rebarreling, and you don't need a milling machine unless you're doing a lot of slides and custom machining on handguns and things like that. And even if you do, as infrequently as you actually use it, you can go to a machine shop and work out a deal to have them do that until you finally are up financially. So to get started, you only need a few thousand dollars in tools. And again, we have a turnkey package that will get you going, at least in general repair. And then as you go along, you'll want a specialty tool to do this and a specialty tool to do that. But I, I tell people, don't go out and go spend $100,000 on a shop when they're really just out buying toys, you know. This is about a business, and a business is return on investment. And so don't overdo the investment up front. Um, did you have a lot of equipment when you started? Man, I had nothing. Um, I had the, I had a grinder, I had a belt sander, and I had that small um, drill press. But basically, it was the tools that I actually got from you yep. and uh, from your course, and then all the hand tools that I had laying around the house. And basically, I didn't start buying specialty tools until I actually needed them for a particular job. So I didn't have wasted money laying around. So I bought the tools as I needed them. Okay, well, that's exactly what I, you know, tell people to do. So, uh, uh, so here's some of the other questions we had. Uh, people, well, we've already dealt with this. People are afraid in the uh, in uh, challenging times. Prices are slashed, corners are cut. Nobody's spending any money. You know, well, we know that's not true. Um, it seems like it out there at times, but I'm telling you what. I go to a restaurant and they're all full, <laughs> and these are spendy restaurants, you know, and. And people always have the money for what they really want. Um, can it be done by one man? Yeah. Most, a lot of gunsmithing shops are one-man businesses. You can grow. In fact, one of the things we we suggest is collaboration. Find a gun shop that uh, where they have a gun shop running now, and they're looking for some gunsmiths to work with them. That's a fantastic way to start. Um, do I need to employ other gunsmiths to make that kind of money? Well, you heard... Um, Jan, he's making that kind of money right now by himself, and uh, and I guess you occasionally have a, a retired 
uh, part-time guy works with you, eighty something years old, or is that? Yeah, he's know? also yeah yeah he's also a student of yours. Oh. Okay. And uh, and uh, he's the one that actually got his uh, nickname is Chief. He's a retired uh, chief in the uh, Navy. And, oh. Okay. Um, he um, uh, he's the one that actually got me started because you know I was watching the work he was doing. I'm saying to myself, man, you get an 80 year old man like this that can put out work like that. So um, and then I that's when I found you guys. But yeah, Jay, I I do a lot of work with him. Um, we share back and forth, or I throw him work, or if there, he has a, a tool that I don't have, I can borrow it, okay. um, and vice versa. So yeah, Gene was saying. Get in with the gunsmith in your area, befriend him. Uh, don't make them think that you're a threat to them, and they'll they'll put their hand out to you for you to come and help them and for them to share their knowledge with you. And uh, and that's what I'm finding out more now is I'm getting gunsmiths from Long Beach over here that are calling me and saying, hey, come on down, let me show you how to do this, or they have a lathe or a tool that I don't have. I hire them to do my stuff uh, for the lathe. Okay. Uh, rebarreling and things like that. So yeah. Well, that that works, and and that's not even counting all the gun shops that don't have anybody that exactly. would love to have somebody working with them. So anyway, the work's out there. Um, you know, the uh, another thing was question was asked: What's the best way to successfully enter the custom gun marketplace? Um, that's you know, let me just divide this up and say there's the repair marketplace, which is a great bread and butter thing to do. And people can make a very good living on repair, but there's one major secret to it, and that's knowing how to quickly diagnose what the problem is. If you can't figure out the problem, then you can't fix it. And if you can't fix it, you're going to be breaking parts and wasting a lot of time spinning your wheels. So that's where our design function repair course comes in. It teaches you all the systems, uh, and then you can do the analysis figure out what's wrong, make the proper repair, and get it out the door. The the beautiful thing about that, too, is you can review the videos whenever you want because you can't remember everything, and there's 100-plus hours of just design function repair, and that's in the professional level one course. And in the master course, there's you know a whole lot more. So anyway, that's the repair side of things. On the other side, the custom side, uh, it, part of it depends on what your own passion is. I mean, uh, Daryl Holland, who teaches all the custom rifle building and builds beautiful custom rifles that start right around $5,000 now, um, he was more passionate about long-range accuracy. Gene Shuey, although, and, and, and Daryl, by the way, can build excellent 1911s and other pistols. Don't, don't mistake that. He's a fantastic gunsmith all the way around. Gene Shuey can build beautiful custom rifles, as he did in the Mauser course, showing you how to do that on the Building Custom Mauser, but he really loves the competition related to handguns. So that's where he really got deep into doing that. So part of it is you follow your passion, and people will say, hey, can you do this? Or you'll do things for your own guns, and they'll see it, and they go, oh, I want that. And, I mean, Gene Shuey has gotten into Glocks in such a huge way, and he, you know, retext reshaping, retexturing the frames, uh, sights, the triggers, all the different things he's doing, you know, uh, to them. And people pick them up, feel them, and just they fall in love. And he gets all the work he needs just doing one major gun show uh, a year, essentially, three times a year. He goes to the big Reno show. So it's out there if you want it. Part of it is you follow your heart and your passion. Um, you know, one thing that I want to tell everybody is, you know, AGI – we started out with the with the, the goal in mind of preserving the gunsmithing arts, and that's what we've done. We've preserved the design function repair that Master Gunsmith Bob Dunlap uh, taught when he was teaching gunsmithing. He's now retired, but we preserved that. It's the only place to get it. Uh, none of the brick-and-mortar schools teach it. In fact, they teach the old-fashioned way where you're going to spend a semester, you know, working on building a rifle versus get you know learning quickly. Um, we teach so many other disciplines in our course. We're now the premier gunsmithing school in the country. There's no, we have more working gunsmiths like Jan than all the other gunsmithing schools combined. So all of that being said, what we're really about is now is we are really in the 
personal freedom and self-reliance business, if you will. That's what I'm pushing out because we've preserved the gunsmithing, we teach it effectively, and now I want people to be, you know, self-reliant again. Be, be, be American men and women, to, you know, just plot your own destiny. And we provide you the tools to do that, but you have to provide a little bit of the sweat, a little bit of the, you have to have the burning desire. If you got the burning desire, you can be successful in this country. I don't care what the economy is. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox a little bit there, Jan. But uh, um, knowing what the charge was another question. I told you guys we have the flat rate book that's included with that, uh, with the course, with the, um, with the master course. Um, I keep talking about the master course. The master course, in brief, includes the complete design function repair course, includes all the customizing courses, includes the welding course uh, where you do TIG welding, MIG welding, stick gas, everything. It includes the complete machine core, machining course, which teaches you how to use a lathe, how to use a mill, how to thread, how to knurl, uh, turning, uh, barreling work is covered in the core, overall course. Um, uh, the uh, shows you the milling, setting up a mill, tells you what to buy, uh, on and on. And then it also, the master course, includes the complete business success package with all the federal firearms information, the marketing information, and so on. So those are the kind of different levels of courses. Um, so that's all covered in there. Um, some of the other things, we covered size of space. You don't need a lot of space. Uh, you, tools. Um, Learning curve, okay, here was a biggie. A lot of people have the idea, and Jan, weigh in on this, that it's going to take, you know, the old idea, it's going to take you four years to be a basic apprentice, and then you're going to take you another 20 years to be able to do this or that. Um, our method teaches systematically A to Z as fast as you can absorb it. You can go back and review it whenever you want. And we take the equivalent of what I went through in gunsmithing school in two and a half years, plus years of learning afterwards, and we compress that down into a few hundred hours total of video. And you can start gunsmithing literally within hours or days of starting this course. It doesn't have to take you years. Hours, days, and months. And in fact, legally, you could be up and operating in about 90 days, because that's about how long it typically takes to process a license. Um, Jan, how fast did you say you were you were going? Um, I was um, I was uh, full board in just just a hair over 90 days. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, to get back at what you said uh, about that learning, uh, what's great for me is is that. I'll never remember everything that's in any of your videos 100% because I'll, if you don't use it all the time and you don't have that particular gun to work all the time, you're going to forget it. So it lets me actually go back to that gun and went, oh, crap, that's how it works. And, um, and uh, to me, that's 100% uh, better than trying to look up a book. And uh, the method that AGI has, um, literally, I have the confidence now, and, and this is no lie. I'm not saying this to, to boast about you guys, but I can literally take apart any gun right now that I've never, ever seen before and literally put it back together without even thinking about, wait a minute, I should look at a schematic at least. And there are quite a few guns um, that I didn't have to do that. And one, for example, was the Mauser broom handle. Never saw one in my life. And it was like three months ago, one came across, and I took it apart, and I figured it out and went right for it because I felt confident enough, and I feel even more confident today that once you get over that one little um, uh, uh, confident-bearing uh, step you have, the rest is all downhill. Okay. That's that's the way it should be. I mean, that's what the whole program program is designed for. And so yeah. thank you thank you for saying that. Um I, I want to hit some more of these questions, too, because we we said we would. Um, there's a question about do you have to be an FFL to just work on guns and uh, not sell anything but services? Well, the answer is kind of yes, no, um, or it depends. And one, I'll say right here, I'm not a legal expert. Always check with someone who's a legal expert to get uh, questions answered. But as I understand it, 
if you're just doing work, getting started, and you're doing work for friends, and um, they're just loaning you your firearm, their firearms, and you're not making a permanent transfer, you're just loaning, you're doing the work, especially if they happen to be right there while you're doing it, and you're not charging them anything for it, you're just kind of getting your feet wet, um, you don't need to charge. You don't need an FFL for that because that's just a hobby, and particularly working on your own guns, right? And you can acquire a lot of guns. By the way, at gun shows, broken guns. Just advertise that you want broken guns, and people bring you broken guns, and you make some great deals, and actually make a nice profit on that too. But anyway, um, so that stuff you don't need a license for because you're doing your own stuff. Or you're doing stuff for free. Uh, but once you start charging for the services then I feel you definitely need an FFL. Uh, and But don't be intimidated by that. There's 50,000 people that have federal firearms licenses, more than in the United States. You can get one, too. Um, it's really primarily filling out the paperwork properly, and then staying legal is pretty easy as long as you do your bookkeeping properly, and it's not all that difficult or all that scary. I've had a, a federal firearms license now for, geez, I think, I think since 1980. Two, <laughs> and um, you know, I, I, it hasn't been a problem. Um, I've had my inspections uh, when they come around, and uh, we have always had uh, no problems because we keep clean books. So that's really just the key. Um, have you any problems at all, Jan? Nope, not at all. As a matter of fact. Um it was about four years before I took your course. Uh, I was teaching only, and um, I decided I was just going to go apply for my uh, FFL. And I applied for it and uh, out of my home. And uh, I had the license in my hand in less than 70 days, 60 days. Um, uh, you know, the ATF made it very, very easy to get. Um, it's not a hard thing to get out of your home. Um as a matter of fact, you don't need all of, let's say, the centralized list or anything like that unless you're going to sell guns. Um, you do need the FFL uh, in most cases if, you, like Gene said, you're going to do business and charge for it um, because legally at that point, uh, again, I'm not saying I'm a legal expert, but I'm going from what I understand is once I have a gun and I'm working on it and it's a serialized part, then I better have a license to be able to handle that. Um, so, uh, but as, as far as uh, a gunsmith needing it, the FFL would come in handy so you can get your discounts um, at uh, like Brownells or any of these other places um, that uh, I used it for only discounts. I've never, ever did transfers until um, uh, months after I actually took uh, – the AGI class, and I said, you know what, I'll start doing transfers. So I went through the extra hoops, which, again, is no problem. Yeah, and that uh, centralized list he mentioned is only a California thing, so don't you other guys sweat that. Um, oh. and the uh, You see, we've got a lot more hoops to jump through out here in California than almost anywhere else in the country. So if we can do it, you can do it. Um, yeah. The, the, um, some other questions that came up was uh, types of federal firearms licenses. Um, the most common license is what they call an 01, and that is just a regular dealer's license. And, as a, and if you've got a regular dealer's license, you can do gunsmithing. You don't need a gunsmithing FFL to do gunsmithing. The gunsmithing FFL has the same advantages as an 01. So as a gunsmith, you can still buy and sell firearms. So it's kind of interesting that way. The only time you get into a uh, a higher level need for a higher level license is like what I have is an 07 license, which is a manufacturing license. And that allows me to actually manufacture firearms uh, from scratch. And so uh, license-wise, I would suggest that most people either go ahead and get an 01 license, regular dealer's license, or get a, a gunsmith's license, which uh, I believe is an 06, if I recall properly. Um, but you just check the box, and it really depends on what you want to do the most. And if you're, particularly if you're doing something out of your home and you want to lean it more toward gunsmithing, then I'd just go ahead and get the gunsmith license. Uh, again, I'm not a legal expert. That's called weasel language. <laughs> so, all right. Hey, um, marketing-wise, 
There's a lot of different things we tell them, uh, tell people how to do in our marketing manual that comes with the uh, the, the master course. Uh, but going to gun shows is a great way to get a lot of business uh, and the gun ranges and so on. Um, but you can definitely attract business uh, left and right. And I suggest people look for more affluent business. You know, um, I want to I want to address one thing that I, I talk to a lot of our students about, and that is. Somebody brings you in a broken down old 22 or shot, single shot shotgun that's only worth 20 bucks, and it's missing a firing pin and a spring, and uh, it's got loose breech, and boy, you're going to need to put some work in it. And you tell the guy, "Oh man, this ain't worth fixing. You know, just take that piece of junk out of here." Uh, wrong. That's not the right message because you yeah. have no idea who that person is and what that gun's worth to them. I mean, if Sam Walton walked in and that was the shotgun that he hunted rabbits with his dad, what do you think he'd pay to have it fixed? I mean, there's no limit, right? So the same thing goes toward when a guy brings in a firearm. You tell him honestly, okay, well, it's missing a firing pin. I'm going to have to make this that from scratch because this is obsolete. I can do that. Uh, it needs a spring. I can make that as well. Um, it has loose breech. I'm going to have to weld up the hinge pin and fix this. Okay, we can do that. Um, and I'm going to have to charge you $300. Your job at that point is just to be quiet. If that's fair, then let him decide right there whether that's what he wants to do or not. And so um, that's how a lot of money is lost in gunsmithing because the person looks at it and goes, oh, a shotgun's only worth $20. I can only charge him $5 to fix a firing pin and this and that and the other. Well, that's baloney. You're not under any obligation to work for free. You yeah. Know? Last I heard, me, they don't can I give... Step in there? Huh? Yeah, can I step in there a second? Yeah, uh, yeah you, yeah, you, you, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. I... And 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 I I have a hard time when I see people do exactly what you said. Hey, this is a piece of junk. Get it out of here. I don't even want to work on it. But you know what is not worth something to you is worth a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to that man who just brought it in. I get a lot of my work uh, people that uh, that show me gratitude by giving me other work because I took in something that was a childhood memory to them that their grandfather took them out into the woods and let him shoot this 22 for the first time. And I end up having to charge this person literally uh, on a J.C. Higgins 22 rifle, $422 or 26 bucks for me to fix this gun. But it was worth it for him. I would never tell a, a customer that comes into my shop, this is a piece of junk, don't fix it. Well, I will honestly say, is this gun worth anything to you? And the first words out of their mouth is 90% of the time, yes. Then I tell them everything I'm going to do for that gun. If they tell me it's not worth it, then I don't even bother uh, expressing to them that uh, I can fix it. Because if it's not worth anything to them, they're not going to want to spend the money. But never tell a customer, this is a piece of junk, get rid of it. Because what's worth some, what's worth nothing to you is worth a lot to them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, a lot to that. I would. I I get a lot of business because I've taken on guns that pro, other gunsmiths have turned down because it's it's literally too it's junk for them to work on. And you know, hey, where else are you going to get the experience but to work on other people's uh, miseries that they've had laying around in their attic for the last twenty years? This is the best experience you're going to get. And and one other thing I want to touch on that you talked about before is, well, uh, some people say, well, how, where am I going to get these guns to work on that you're talking about? All I did was I made phone calls to all my friends and said, hey, how would you like a free trigger job on your gun? How, how would you like this gun on your gun for free? That's where I got all my guns to work on. <laughs> yeah, and after a while, you got to retrain them. Hey, no more free lunch here, pal. <laughs> That's it, exactly. But you know, when you worry about where you're going to get the guns to work on, hey, you got friends. You got it. You got it. Hey, here's some other questions, real quick. Um, uh, some of the people wanted to know about contact for uh, help when they have questions. Uh, we have Jack Landis that fields our questions here, provides technical support. Um, we provide our students with certificates to contact and spend time on the phone with Bob Dunlap, Master Gunsmith Bob Dunlap, whose time is very uh, precious. Uh, we have Ken Brooks, Master Gunsmith and former instructor uh, at Lassen College Gunsmithing School, who does our, our online uh, answering the Q&A for our students. 
so there's plenty of, of, of support there. Um, see, other people were asking about, uh, you know, there's too much to learn initially. Oh, I can't handle it. There's, boy, you know, there's the custom gunsmithing, there's machining, there's the welding, that, that, you know, um, I, my advice is always you just start at the beginning, and that's why the gunsmithing course, the professional design function repair, uh, it starts with the 1911 45 automatic as a lock breech single action automatic, and then it moves building block by building block through the other auto pistols, showing you what's different and talking about what's the same. And that way you just learn the differences and you learn the systems. And we do the same thing on revolvers and uh, and so on. And then when you move into shotguns, pumps, and single act shots and uh, autos and rifles and rim fires and so on. It's all a very much a building block where the things you learn at the end are built upon what you learned at the beginning in the pistol section. Firing pin design, firing pin protrusion, all those kinds of things. Lock up, headspace, speed ramp design, and so on. So you learn those things and it's not overwhelming that way. And as you learn the design function and then repair, when you get into custom gunsmithing, you already know systems, and this is where we see people goof up guns because they customize, quote-unquote, the guns, and they might even look pretty, but the guns don't work because they don't understand the basics underneath everything and, uh, and how they're supposed to, the, to function, how the parts interrelate, and things that they may have changed, angles, uh, uh, parts relationships, engagement, so on. Um, Anyway, so don't be overwhelmed. Take this, you know, eat the elephant one spoonful at a time. And that you start in the beginning with our professional gunsmithing course, which is included in the master course as well, and you start with the first video and you just move through it, and you'll be working on guns in no time. Jan, did you start at, uh, because I know you like to bounce around, did you start at the beginning or did you go wherever you felt like you wanted to work? No, actually, I started at the beginning, and for me, I had to view videos one, two, and three. It took me an enti- it took me, um, you know, I, I I didn't want to get frustrated because I was getting frustrated, but all I did was I went back over the, those three videos for an entire month, oh, really? time after time. Uh, yeah, I mean, it literally took me a month to go over those three videos because I was watching them over and over again. I knew nothing about guns. And then one day, it like miraculous thing, uh, it clicked, and I went from 1911s, and I went to the Rugers, I went to Glocks, I went. It once you learn, like G, uh, Gene was saying, once you learn the basic system and how that well, 1911 works, that is the most basic gun you're going to come across right now, except for the Smith and Wesson revolver. That is the basic, and from there, if you know how to fix that, you can fix any other because they all work the same they just have different ways they work but they all basically work the same and i went from i i went from that to the middle of the course to the to the uh to the end of the course and i just went from there but that i that was the way i learned but you can start anywhere in that course and just learn the basic 1911 up front and really get that one into your mind the most out of all and the rest will just come easy to you okay and that's why we, you know, Bob Dunlap, for many years, all those years of teaching at Lassen College, you know, that's what he taught us first is that 1911 because it is the building blocks. Uh, John Browning was a genius, and he, he the designer of the 1911, um, he re- the things that go on in that gun are the systems that you'll see in so many other types of firearms, including... Uh, it's relevant to uh, you know to rifles, to shotguns, and so on. When you talk about lockup and sear engagement and extractor design and uh, feed ramp design and so on. So anyway, all right. So that's what you can do. You've heard Jan. Um, you know he started, spent a lot of time in the beginning. Okay, I, I applaud him for that. I don't know if any of that had to do with just you know lack of experience and or that learning disability. But once he got it, man, look at this guy is rocked and rolled. And what was three and a half months later? You were going. You were actually gunsmithing full time already, or? Yeah, no, full time. Um, my first uh, my first gunsmithing gig was at the uh, gun show, and 
And then from there, it was like a person called me here, a person called me there, and next thing I know, my phone rings off the hook, and I'm really ripping the hair out of my head because I can't get to these guns that I have laying here when I'm answering questions and getting more people to bring more guns in. So that's why I'm like three and a half weeks behind right now. And, uh, uh, you know, the the more you get your name out there, the more business you're going to get, the more confident you're going to feel about yourself because literally I knew nothing about gunsmithing. It scared the hell out of me. But once I got into those first three videos, and I literally took the time to learn that one gun. Man, it was like butter. I literally went through that course like nobody's business. Now, again, I didn't. I don't remember everything that was in there. Um, so if there is a, a question that I have, I'll go back to it. But there isn't anything that comes to my shop right now that I have to say to a customer, well, just leave it here. I'll look at it and see if I can fix it. Now, I know I'm going to fix it. And that's the attitude you have to take. Yeah, I'm going to fix it. If you don't say that to yourself, then you're going to be that one gunsmith that says uh, 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 to your customer one too many times, and it'll show in your work. But the the method that I learned uh, from EGI it just made everything so simple after I got that 1911 down. It was like, man, I didn't know it was this easy. <laughs> Shh, don't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I got to – okay, uh, I got to give some weasel language here, uh, and that is, I'm not guaranteeing to everybody here that you're going to run out and make a hundred grand. Okay, Jan obviously is a guy who gets serious about his work. He sat down, he learned the AGI method, he learned uh, what we teach in design, function, repair. He was willing to charge uh, appropriately for his time. He is willing to go to the gun shows and get the word out there. I mean. It takes a burning desire to succeed as it does in anything, okay? However, he's the real deal, you know? We didn't make Jan up. He's there. He's got his shop down in Southern California. Uh, and, Jan, do you want to even give your web out, web your website out? Is that okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's www ccwforme.com and it's um, uh, other than uh, the giving you the long name it would be ccw charlie charlie william the number four me.com ccwforme.com okay so anyway jan's the real deal uh there's many other successful agi gunsmiths around the country um people decide whether they want to be repair gunsmiths or custom gunsmiths i really recommend you start off doing a bunch of repair because your confidence level will be, go through the moon, um, and, and you'll develop your uh, base for getting into customizing. Uh, but you do decide what you want to do personally. And like I said, I'm not going to guarantee you're going to round make a hundred grand a year. You might only make an extra $10,000 a year part-time or $25,000 a year part-time or $50,000 a year part-time. Really your choice. And, uh, yeah. and you... You decide what you're going to do and what's appropriate for you. I'm not going to tell you that. Um, what I am going to do is we're going to open it up for Q&A in just a second here, but I want to lay out what some of your options are so that you can have the same opportunity to experience uh, a profession like Jan is doing, gunsmithing for yourself, being self-reliant, having your own freedom, and, and controlling your own destiny. And so the... The master gunsmithing course is what we recommend you take if you can afford to. Um, the master gunsmithing course includes the 108 hours of professional design, function repair. It also includes a lot of other courses, including the welding course, which is A to Z, even if you know nothing about welding. Uh, it takes you from how to set up gas oxacetylene torch set, how to weld MIG, how to weld stick, how to weld TIG. TIG welding is really important for gunsmithing as you become an advanced gunsmith. Yeah. We have the machine shop course in there, same thing. It takes somebody from the point of not even really understanding what a lathe does all the way to how to set up a lathe, how to thread, turn, uh, knurl, uh, ream. Same thing with a mill, how to set it up, what to look for to buy, when buying used lathe or a used mill how to do uh, all the various aspects of machining, including using digital readouts, 
uh, measuring devices of all types and so on. Uh, there's a complete business success package that comes with it, which includes audio CDs of interviews with instructors, um, including about how to, you know, shop workflow and how to how to go about that. Um, the, the only gunsmithing flat rate book that has ever been created. Uh, so you just put in your hours against the time that it should take you, and that gives you a starting point uh, for charging. Uh, the tax secrets that they don't want you to know about, audio CD, uh, that where we interview a CPA uh, who's very familiar with our business and who uh, tells you how to structure your, you know, your different opportunities for structuring your business. Um, and the, uh, the, including all the different things that you can potentially write off in a business that makes it uh, very financially helpful, let's put it that way. Uh, there's a marketing manual with that. There's uh, videos from The Secret Life of Bob Dunlap inside Bob's head, how he thinks through problems, and he work with them right there on the bench, and he shows you how he picks up a gun, what his analysis process is, how he goes through that. Um, there are certificates for consultations with Bob. Um, there's uh, the Business Success Toolkit, which is a 12 audio CD series I did on everything from goal setting to getting the results you want in life to uh, how to survive an economic slump, uh, how to attract business like a magnet, how to advertise and do promotion, uh, turning your highest potential sale per customer, making your business plan come alive, and, and a lot more. There's a whole manual goes with that as well. There's also all the videos on how to build a G3, an AR-15, an M1 Grand, all those from parts kits, how to do trigger jobs on a number of different guns, how to do the Mauser rifle, how to, uh, there's the custom, building the custom Mauser rifle. There's so, there's a, a number of other videos, I don't want to <laughs> wear you guys out, but on bluing and parkerizing and, uh, uh, excuse me, bluing and slow nust, rust and niter bluing, uh, bedding techniques and case hardening, heat treating, coil and flat spring making, and so on. It's all, the whole nine yards is in the Master Gunsmithing course. And the Master Gunsmithing course is a $6,997 investment. Um, and I do say investment because it's obvious that you can get that back pretty quickly if you apply yourself. And one other thing I do want to say, though, is when you said uh, about specializing, this guy that we just mentioned earlier, his name is Chief. He's 86 years old. He took the AGI course back when. I can't remember. He did it when you guys had VHS. Um, and he specializes in 1911 and customizing 1911. Even though he works on everything else, this man's 86 years old and doesn't turn down a job and he does all his own customizing. Uh, he doesn't send anything out to be done. So if an 86-year-old man could do it, you 40-year-old and 20-year-old guys can do the same thing. Yeah, that's a fact. Thank you. Uh, Jan? I yeah. Mean, excuse me, uh, operator? Yes. Okay, do we have some questions? We do. Our first question comes from David in New Mexico. David, your line is open. Hi, David. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? Great. What's your question, sir? Well, uh, I know you were talking about insurance, but I'm just curious. I'm trying to work up numbers here based on what you just said about the Enhanced Gunsmith course. Uh -huh. What about liability insurance and, and those kind of things? Obviously, there's some kind of liability involved any time you deal with a firearm, correct? Well, sure, just like if you deal with anything else. But it's not that expensive for insurance. Um, we have a couple of different vendors that we can uh, put you in touch with. Uh, one is NRA recommended. And the other one is a in private industry. They're both great, um, and it, depending on your size, it'll cost you fifty to a hundred dollars a month, which for a business that's like pretty small cost. That's cheaper than my car insurance. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, uh, uh, do you have any other questions? No, I just wish I had the money right now to get going. Well, I tell you what, sell the boat. boat Get rid of the uh, the car, you know, whatever you got to do, because this is one of the few things you can invest in that not only brings you satisfaction, but it can bring you the money back and then in spades. And we have a lot of people that want to do this as a retirement, and they don't, well, they're, lately they've been not putting it off. They've been actually tapping their retirement to get the money, to get started, because then they'll get the money flowing in 
as they need it. So anyway, well, best of luck to you. Uh, operator, uh, next question, because I know we're really tight on time. Okay. Our next question is going to come from Dimitri in California. Dimitri, your line is open. Hey, Gene. How are you? We're great. What can I do for you? Uh, question was, is I'm, I'm looking into this as a supplemental income, and uh, what kind of financing options are available for someone that, you know, doesn't have a boat to sell or something like that? Right. Well, we have a monthly program, and we've also, on occasion, for the right situation, uh, have broken the payments into a couple payments. We can't stretch it out real far because, you know, the funny thing is my employees here actually want to get paid. So uh, <laughs> we have bills just like everybody else. But the thing is we do have a monthly program for you where you can stretch it out over a, a couple of the years if you need to uh, for the bigger programs. Um, most people want to get this thing going and they want the material and get in the business so they get it all at once. I would say the vast majority of our students sign up for the entire course at one time, and chances are if you really put your thinking cap on, you'll find somebody that you can, uh, something you can tap or somebody that you can borrow from or, or whatever. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm just throwing out ideas there, but we find people, um, once they know they can do it, they want it. And yeah, so, can I say something, Gene? Yeah, go. Yeah, you know, what I did, uh, I was in the same boat. I didn't want to touch my retirement and fortunately, I had that, but I didn't want to touch that to uh, uh, take this course either. But I looked at it like an investment, like Gene said. Um, if I took uh, uh, $3,500 right now and put it in the bank and wanted to collect interest on it or put it in a CD, well, that 3500 bucks is going to be gone in a year. But by buying the course, and I spent $3,500 doing it, I just did it. I cut my expenses. I just didn't go out to eat as much. But my return on this was just at six months, I actually, in repairing guns, I actually got my money back within six months. So, um, and that money was back for me to do whatever I wanted with it. And it just kept on going from there. So if you cut back on a few expenses, this is a worthwhile investment because, like I said, I got my money back real fast. Well, there you go. So anyway, um, but you, one thing I've forgotten to tell everybody, write this down. Uh, the phone number is 1-800-797-0867. Okay, that's 1-800-797-0867. If you call here during regular working hours, uh, Pacific Standard Time, from about 8 o'clock in the morning to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, sometimes even earlier, uh, in the day, we we have Oscar and Sherry here and some other folks, uh, Becky, uh, Heather. They will do all they can to answer your questions and get you what's right for you. So um, that's so. If you have questions about a monthly program or if you or if you think you could swing it, but you need to break it into a couple of payments, uh, we might be able to work with you. Okay, we definitely have a monthly program. But um, but with these, particularly with these kits, you know we've got so much in the way of hard cost and product there to get you the turnkey system that um, those are really those prices are are you know paid in full. Okay, I hopefully answer your question. Thank you. And um, ne operator, next question, please. Okay. Um, our next question will come from Joe in Florida. Joe, your line is open. Hi, Gene. Hey. Hey. How can we help um, you, Joe? I didn't I didn't grow up with guns. I came into guns about four years ago, and I've never really worked with my hands in a machine shop or anything like that. So I'm really worried about my ability, you know. And um, so I was just wondering if you could address that. Absolutely. Um, what's important is this, and we found this particularly, it's uh, so perfectly illustrated in our welding course. If I can show you what success looks like between your ears, in other words, put the picture in your mind of what success, success looks like, and you see with that welding course, for example, the molten puddle moving as the torch moves and the wires fed in, you go, oh, that's what that is. That's how that works. I see the rhythm. And you can get, teach your hands to duplicate it. The most important thing here and the thing that we offer is knowledge. And in a visual and audible sense, you're getting all this into your mind. And all of a sudden, and you know, with the guns and so on, we're using cutaway guns. 
when you see how everything works, you get it. And now you can teach your hands what to do. Um, so I know that you can be successful as long as you've got a desire to be successful. Now, we back that up with a one-year money-back guarantee. So if you found out it absolutely did not work for you, you've got an escape clause right there. Uh, I can tell you that only about 1% of all the people that enroll in our courses exercise that option because they have some particular reason that they need to. The other 99% uh, stay with us. And so you know, I say go for it. You know, another another thing, too, uh, is if you know what end of a screwdriver to use uh, uh, and what a screwdriver does and uh, what a Phillips head does and what a hammer does, uh, you have the ability, and that's all there is to it. You, if you know the basic tools, you got the ability. And because we're showing you, showing you what to do, and how to go about doing it. But it's so important that you understand the why, and that's what the knowledge we provide in that design, function, and repair. So that's really the key. Okay. So, okay. You know, thank you. Buck it up. Uh, get yourself a whole bucket full of confidence. And try it because you're going to get a return on that confidence and the pride you'll feel in knowing that you can do this and you'll be more self-reliant and more uh, you'll enjoy your personal freedoms more. Because one of the things that I didn't even get a chance to talk about is when you know gunsmithing at like the master gunsmith level, you also know welding, you also know machining, and you know understand how mechanical things work because you learn systems. And it's just amazing how applicable that is to so many other different things. Anyway, okay, off my soapbox. Operator, another question, please. And thanks for that question, by the way. Okay. Jean, just a reminder, we are almost out of time. So did you, come, did you want to take uh, – If we have time for one more, we'll do it real fast, okay? Okay. And then we may extend for a couple more. Go okay. ahead. Sure. Our next question comes from PJ in Washington. PJ, your line is now open. Hi, Jean. Hi. Very quickly, what's your question, sir? Okay, I'm in Blaine, Washington, where there's the Border Patrol, Homeland Security, Police, Highway Patrol. I'm interested in the um, Certified Armorers course. Is okay. that doable? Uh, yes, and what you need to do is call the office at the 1-800-797-0867 and ask them about the Law Enforcement Armors course, which is another course that we have. Uh, specifically oriented for law enforcement. Uh, it, it's also a great thing to have if you're one of our gunsmithing students, professional gunsmithing students, because it adds on some additional things. The professional course is actually at a higher level okay. uh, because it's higher than an armorer. It's actually a gunsmith, the, uh, the master gunsmith, right. professional gunsmith. But the yeah. armorer's level will definitely help you get some work, and we've had people uh, call us telling us that they've gotten work from departments uh, in fact, one guy got himself a full-time job, called us practically in tears because he was so excited that he got a full-time job because he passed our course uh, in that law enforcement, certified law enforcement armors course. But um, the professional gunsmithing course is definitely at a much higher, much more in-depth level. And so you take start, the, start wherever you can, okay? So give us a call. Okay, so I can take that and then take the professional course. You could if you wanted to, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. You bet. Okay, operator, let's uh, uh, officially close the call here, and then I'll we'll stay on the line and take a couple more uh, questions and answers. This officially ends tonight's call. Thank you for your participation. Have a good evening. You may now disconnect.